Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Lord, be with you. And Amen. Let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate worthily these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal a contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you will appear with him in glory. Put to death, then, the parts of you that are earthly, immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and the greed that is idolatry. Stop lying to one another. Since you have taken off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed for knowledge in the image of its creator. Here, there is not Greek and Jew, circumcision and uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free. But Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord.
making their way from Galilee to Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover. It's a big section uh, in the, the Gospel of Luke. Uh, this is not just a geographical journey from north to south. It's also a inner journey because Jesus is teaching us all lessons of discipleship, how to form our minds and hearts, how to be sincere, authentic disciples of his. So it's an inner journey with him. We've learned these, over these past several weeks that we are to be good Samaritans. It's a, a challenge and privilege that is to be a good Samaritan in this world today. The following week, we learned that we need to also sit at the feet of Jesus like Mary, Martha, Martha's sister, and listen carefully to him. Last week was all about prayer, right? what to pray, the Our Father, how to pray, who we are praying to. Right? Today, we have a challenging lesson on wealth and possessions. Disciples of Jesus Christ right, ultimately look to God to ultimately look to God for security in God alone and not in our ability to accumulate wealth, power, possessions for our security, which can be false. Jesus warns us, he says, watch and be on your guard against greed of any kind, for life does not consist of an abundance of possession. The Greek uh, word there for greed, for, for greed uh, or avarice uh, is pleonexia. That's the word that's found in the original text, which means the desire of gaining more and more. Pleonexia. Uh, with that in mind, let's look at the two main characters of the scriptures today. The first, in the first reading, Kohelet. In the book of Ecclesiastes, Kohelet, the name means one who assembles, one who calls an assembly together. Kohelet in the Book of Ecclesiastes has made a, a collection of reflections on the meaning of life. Right? But some people call him a grumpy old man. If you ever been read the uh, read the, the book of Ecclesiastes, you might agree. This, this guy's this is a pretty grumpy old man here. Right? He, he seems to be skeptical, pessimistic in his view of the world. Uh, the tone of the book is kind of alienated, kind of cynical, kind of melancholy. Grumpy old, old, old man, right? The, the dominant theme is the emptiness or the futility of all of our human effort. He says it over and over, vanities of vanities. All is vanity. Right? What, does, what does he mean? Not vanity in that sense of disorder of self-love or the obsession of one's appearances. Not that kind of vanity. Uh, but what Kohelet is talking about here, as he's writing in the, in the original Hebrew, is the, the word uh, Hevel Hevelim, Hevel Hevelim, uh, which means breath, <sighs> breath, a breath lasts but a moment, and such is our human lives, just a breath. We toil all of our lives long, but to what end, right? In the end, it all amounts to more than the merest breath, right? So what about the other character from today's scriptures, the rich fool in Luke's gospel. He's had a huge harvest, which is a blessing from, from God. Any of the good things that we've been given in life are, are a blessing from God. So he has this huge harvest. But what is his reaction uh, to this great blessing that he's given by God? He doesn't turn into praise uh, of God. He asks himself, what am I to do? I don't have enough room to store up all my huge harvest, all my crops. Pull down my bars and build larger ones. Right? He then says, Now for you, see that that's the interesting thing about Luke's text. Now, now he talks to himself. Now as for you, you have so many good things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, be merry. Right? But God says, You fool, you fool. This night your life will be demanded of you, and the things that you have prepared, to whom will they belong? Right? Then Jesus spells out the lesson of the parable, saying, Thus will it be for all who store up treasure for themselves, but are not rich in what matters to God. Rich in what matters to God is the key. Notice that the, the rich man, 
He's not mourned because of his wealth. Okay? Nor is he criticized for not attending to the needs of those less fortunate than he. His foolishness is much deeper. Right? Again, it's an inner journey that we're all taking here. An inner journey of the heart. Something needs to be uprooted out of this man. It's the attitude of greed, pleonexia, that underlies all of his actions, right? His desire to accumulate more and more and be more and more selfish. His life consists in accumulating more and more. Prosperity has become the number one priority in his life. Right? So think about the society that shapes and forms us, right? In which the supreme goal is to have, right? To have more, to have more, right? A society in which the very essence of our beings is defined by what we, we have. If I have nothing, then I am practically nothing in the eyes of a lot of people. In this type of society, we can be slaves to money, to possessions, material things, when everything in society is just up for sale. Okay? So the parable of the rich man is a wake-up call. It is a wake-up call. What is really, really urgently important to us? Right? Right? Put the question another way. What, does, what, what is it that I worship? What is it that I worship? Worship, that word means literally, what do I give worth to? Do I give worth to? Where do I put all my, my time, my talents, my money, my energy, my emotions, my enthusiasm, etc.? Right? It's less than God? It's less than God. Right? Right? If the, if the Bible speaks so much of idolatry. This is when God is not the, the top of our priority list. Right? If all these things that are less than God are reversed at the top. Right? Then we have idolatry. St. Paul speaks in the second reading to Colossians saying, put to death then the parts of you that are earthly, right? These this, uh, priority list that is inverted, right? Especially the greed that is idolatry, he says. So, brothers and sisters, Koheleth reminds us of the shortness of our life. Hevel, heveli, just a breath. It's just a breath, right? And the parable of the rich fool reminds us not to get greedy, right? Not to want more and, and more. Thinking life and its worth is equal to that. But what is left? <laughs> what is left, we might ask. Well, it's time to get rich. <laughs> time to get rich. All of us. Richer than what matters to God.
for irresponsible and greedy people who risk their souls. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for wisdom to see through the vain and foolish things that clutter our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the souls of the blessed dead. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all of our first responders, for those in the military, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the prayers that we hold silently in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. Lord. Eternal and happy repose of the soul of Tom Petraca, for whom we offer this mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. 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 Holy Lord and Father, may your favor be upon us as you receive the prayers we make. Turn our thoughts from the things of earth as we celebrate these sacred mysteries through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up. He took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which was poured out for you for many and the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's be seated for a few announcements. Thank you. Thank you so much and have a great weekend. 